Hi there everyone, it's time to start battery testing. This video is the first in what I hope will be a series of videos testing all different types of FPV drone batteries. Today, we're gonna to start by looking at TinyWoop batteries. And I've tested over two dozen different TinyWoop batteries from a load of different manufacturers to see which ones perform the best. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through my test methodology. And of course, we're gonna be looking at the results to find out which TinyWoop batteries are great value for money and which ones you should avoid. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. Before we carry on, I have a couple of huge thank yous to make. The first is to Joshua Bardwell, who kindly donated all of the battery test equipment he bought a couple of years ago to support this work. And the second is to my patrons, whose support allowed me to upgrade and recommission all of that equipment and also expand the test capability with some really exciting new pieces of kit that we'll look at in some future videos. If you'd like to join us and support more battery testing and other test work going forward, then please consider joining my Patreon. You can join from just a few dollars a month and you'll get access to a special area of my Discord server and sneak peeks of products and technologies that I'm working on, as well as full access to all of the test data that I've collected on motors, props, and now battery. If that's something that sounds interesting to you, then there's a link down in the video description and I'd really appreciate it if you check that out. Let me take you through the test equipment that we're going to be using to collect the data today. Starting with this, this is the West Mountain Radio CBA4 battery analyzer, except it's no ordinary CBA4. I had them upgrade the electronics inside to their fifth generation electronics for faster load changes, and I also had them remove the instantaneous power limit that's on this device, which means that although it's still got a current limit and a thermal limit, we can run very short bursts at very high powers. And that will more accurately replicate what we see with uh, our drones when we're doing full throttle punch outs. I also prepared these three little connectors. We have a GMB27, uh, an A30, which can also be used for BT 2.0 and a PH 2.0 connector. And these all have 30 millimeter, 22 gauge wires crimped into 15 amp power pole connectors so we can plug them straight into the battery analyzer like so. This will ensure that we have the minimum resistance between the battery analyzer and the battery that we're testing. I also have a scale for measuring the weight of the batteries that's accurate to a tenth of a gram and of course we have the batteries that we're going to be testing today. So we've got everything we need, let's dive into the testing. Now that we've looked at the test equipment, I can tell you a bit more about the test procedure. And I did two different types of tests on these batteries. The first was a constant power discharge. I discharged the batteries at constant power all the way down to 3.1 volts per cell. And the power level that I chose for this test is 3.7 volts times a 12C discharge rate. So that discharges the battery all the way down to 3.1 volts per cell in about five minutes. And that corresponds to a three to four minute flight if you're only discharging down to 3.5 volts per cell. The second test that I did was a burst discharge test. And in this test, again, it started with a constant power discharge, this time at a slightly higher level, 3.7 volts times 15 C discharge rate for 48 seconds and that gets the battery down to 80% full. Once the battery's 80% full, I then did a ramp of power. So every second I increase the power requirement by 3.7 volts times 1C discharge rate, and I kept increasing the power, kept stepping it up every second until the battery hit 3.1 volts per cell. And that gives a really good measure of the maximum power that the battery can deliver at 3.1 volts per cell when it is 80% full. And so that was the second test that I did. Once the tests have completed, we can export the results as a CSV file. So we end up with two CSV files per battery and about 60 CSV files in total for all this testing. That's a lot of CSV files to process manually. So I actually wrote some Python code which walks through all of those files, extracts the key performance parameters that we care about, and also collates the data so that we can plot graphs of the battery performance and compare how different batteries perform against each other. So let's look at the results of that data processing now. I think I've tested a decent number of batteries for this first round of battery testing, but I know that some of you will be looking for particular batteries that maybe I haven't tested yet. So I wanna let you know about my open door battery testing policy. I will happily test every battery that is sent to me by a manufacturer, a retailer, or a member of the FPV community. 
and I'll publish the results either in a YouTube video or on my website aosrc.com. All I ask is that the battery is for FPV and it must be absolutely brand new. It must never have been charged and it must never have been flown. So uh, if you want to get in touch to arrange some battery testing of a particular battery, then I'll put a link down in the video description to my website and there's a contact form at the bottom of every page where you can get in touch to organize battery testing if you'd like to. Now that we've seen how the data is collected and analyzed, it's time to look at the results from my testing. And we're going to start by looking at the total energy delivered by each of these batteries across a constant power 12C discharge down to 3.1 volts per cell. And as we would expect, the larger batteries do better here. The larger the pack, the more energy it's capable of delivering in the 12C discharge test. And we see that the GMB 380 milliamp hour packs, the 90C rated versions, are coming out top in the testing. And the GNB 300 milliamp hour 60C rated packs are coming out at the bottom end of the test, which is exactly what we would expect. In fact, the only real outlier that I can see in all of this testing is the Newbie Drone Nitro Nectar Gold batteries are delivering significantly more energy in total than you'd expect for a 300 milliamp hour pack. And in fact, they're competing pretty well with some 350 and even 380 milliamp hour packs in this test. Now it's time to look at energy density. And for me, this is actually probably more important than the total energy delivered because it looks at the amount of energy you get from the battery per gram of weight that the drone has to carry. We can see that it's not the largest batteries here that necessarily do the best in terms of energy density. In fact, the GNB 350 milliamp hour A30 plug has the best energy density despite not being the biggest pack that we tested. Looking at the low end, we can see that Sometimes it's the really high rated batteries like the 380 milliamp hour 90C battery from GMB that have the worst energy density. And that might be because they're prioritizing power delivered here rather than the total energy capacity of the battery. And there are all sorts of trade-offs that you can make in battery design trading between energy density and power density. Feel free to pause the video at any point if you wanna look at these charts in more detail. But for now, let's move on and look at power. If you're not so worried about flight time and more concerned about getting the maximum performance out of the battery, then you might be more interested in the power that it can deliver. This graph shows the power that the battery can deliver when it's 80% full before the voltage sags to 3.1 volts. And there are really three factors that govern the maximum power that the battery can deliver. It's capacity, bigger batteries can deliver more power. It's C rating, all else equal, a higher C rated pack will usually deliver more power and the type of connector that's used. A low resistance connector like a BT 2.0, an A30 or a GNB 27 connector is gonna perform better than something like a PH 2.0. What we can see is that the top performer, the GNB 380 milliamp hour A30 90C battery has all of these factors working in its favor and that's making it you know, the best performer that I tested. If we look at something like the uh, GMB 300 milliamp hour with a PH 2.0 connector and only a 60C rating, it's got kind of all the factors working against it. It's expected that it would perform the worst in this test. The Newbie Drone Nitro Nectar Gold battery is a standout performer because despite only being 300 milliamp hours and having a PH 2.0 connector and only being rated to 40C, it still performs much, much better than a lot of other larger, higher rated packs in this test. So really, Newbie Drone is underselling the capabilities of this pack in terms of its C rating and capacity. If we're thinking about performance, we also have to consider power density because we wanna get a lot of power out of the battery, but we don't wanna weigh the drone down with a lot of weight. So a battery that can provide a lot of power per gram of weight is really valuable here. And actually, the top and bottom performers don't change compared to the previous chart, but what does change is the Newbie Drone Nitro Nectar Gold moves significantly up the chart, much closer to the top, because it's quite a lightweight battery for the amount of power that it can deliver. So it's worth, again, if you want to, pausing the video here and taking a look at how, um, how the batteries have moved around when considering maximum power versus power density. As well as considering the power that the battery can deliver, when we're thinking about performance, we also need to think about the voltage that the battery can maintain during its discharge. A battery that can maintain a higher voltage is gonna be more efficient because it can deliver the same amount of power with less current and therefore less heating. And it's also gonna be able to achieve a higher RPM at the prop 
because it can overcome more back EMF from the motor. To show you how much variation we see in the voltage during discharge, I produced this plot of voltage versus capacity. All the batteries start off at 4.35 volts and discharge down to 3.1 volts, but the voltage that they maintain during that discharge varies massively by more than 0.2 volts. And if we take a 50% discharge point, we can actually see how all the batteries compare in terms of voltage sag. Voltage sag under discharge is really where we see the field separate into different tiers. What we can see is that the Dogcom, Tattoo R-Line and Newbie Drone Nitro Netto Gold batteries are all in that sort of top S tier. They're able to maintain a voltage of 3.65 volts under a 12C discharge at 50% capacity. Below them, we have kind of the A tier, which are all the very highly rated GMB cells. So the 80 and 90C rated cells from GMB, all able to maintain about 3.6 volts at 50% capacity. And then we have sort of the lower tier, uh, the B and the C tier, which are the lower GMB rated cells, the Speedy Pizza cells, and the COD R 380 milliamp hour cell. So it's, this is probably where you're gonna see the biggest difference in terms of performance between these batteries. When you're flying them, you're just gonna see that the top tier batteries are giving you a higher voltage for longer as you're flying, even if they give you the same amount of energy and the same amount of power, just having that higher voltage is gonna give you an improvement in performance in terms of RPM at the prop and efficiency. Now that we've looked at each of these parameters individually, let's look at a combined plot of energy density, power density, and voltage sag, and score all these batteries. So 100% is gonna be average performance, with anything above 100% being better than average, and anything below 100% being worse than average. We can see that the best batteries across the board are the GMB 350 milliamp hour A30 70C, the Newbie Drone Nitro Nectar Gold, the Dogcom batteries, and the GMB 380 milliamp hour 90C with the A30 plug. And each of these top batteries have a different thing that they're really good at. So the 350 milliamp hour GMB is great for energy density. The Newbie Drone Nitro Nectar Gold is good across the board, but especially for voltage sag. And the 380 milliamp hour is great for power density. So depending on what you want out of each of the batteries, you'll be able to find the right battery by looking at the different subcomponents on this plot. And the total score in the white bar gives you an idea of how the battery performs overall. And that brings us neatly to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you got some value out of looking at this first round of battery testing results. Let me know down in the comments what you thought and what you'd like to see in future battery testing. A huge thank you again to everyone who's supporting this test work and all of my other work on Patreon. I really appreciate all of your help. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.